All right, so this is a supplemental recording. It is not a part of a lecture, but I do want to show how to track down, you know, how an instruction gets the job done, because this is going to be very important for the rest of this class, and I don't want anyone to miss this part out. So what you're seeing here are two screens. Uh, one is uh, what you're seeing right now is called Zerno. It's just a open source um, PDF annotation tool, among other things. Okay, it works best if you have a stylus, uh, which I don't. Um, so I'm just using a mouse you know, to simulate your know, drawing here. If you have an iPad or a cell phone that has uh, a pen or a stylus, you know, you can do this probably a whole lot quicker than I can do it here. But that's kind of you know the the point is you know you can do it on a piece of paper too, uh, which probably is a little bit faster for me because you know using a mouse as a pen is not very handy. And then on the other side we have LogiSim, okay. And I already put in an instruction here. This is an opcode, so we're gonna say this is a mystery opcode. We don't know exactly what it's gonna do, so we'll try to figure it out by you know documenting. Uh, the PDF as we go. <coughs> so that's going to be our exercise today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is to go back to Zerno and um, you know, restart at the very beginning, which is the um, microcode pointer. So the microcode pointer is the main component. So one thing you might want to do you know, even before this is to highlight all the registers you know, that are of importance. So Zerno has a highlighter tool. So with a highlighter tool, what you can do is you simply you know, highlight stuff. You know, it remains to be transparent, so you're not painting over the original text. You're simply you're applying a somewhat transparent you know, highlighter. So we are just highlighting all the important stuff here. All right. So yeah, it's. This is why I said, you know, it's not exactly the best tool for the job, but, you know, it gets the job done nonetheless. All right. So I'm highlighting all the things that can be enabled uh, because if something is enabled, mm, it's probably enabled for a reason. So I'm just highlighting everything that can be potentially enabled. So this is also something that you might want to consider doing is to simply use a highlighter so that you can... Um, focus on the things that are of importance to us. Unfortunately, the highlighter technique does not work on LogiSim because LogiSim, other than the components that I created, you know, it does not actually allow you to um, uh, do anything like that. So if you really do not want the highlighter to kind of like to go over the boundary, you can use the eraser tool, okay? That's kind of, it's just, you know, for people who cannot tolerate, you know, things that are you know, as a kid, if you want to, you know, uh, paint, you know, a one of those, you know, drawing thing, and you, you get upset when your crayon goes over the border, you know, there's a eraser tool, you know, to fix that. So that's kind of cool. All right. So now we go back to LogiSim. So I'm basically just switching between LogiSim and uh, Zerno because, you know, LogiSim is... Um, easier to look at because in, in some sense because it actually has values and the simulation only works in LogiSim. So in this particular video, I am going to go from the beginning. So if you have not taken any notes about instruction execution, that would be a good time to do it. When the micro pointer is at zero, 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 and we're going to have a rising edge, that is the fetch cycle. The fetch cycle is going to grab the byte that is pointed to by the program counter. This is the program counter. And it's grabbed the byte that is pointed to by the program counter in RAM. And then it will put it into the instruction register, which is right here. So, but I'm not going to um, annotate by drawing anything. You can do so if you want to on your own uh, sheet. So control T. So we can see how in the instruction register now has 76, which is the opcode, but the program counter remains pointing at location 00. So the next thing we need to do is a falling edge. This particular falling edge is going to increment the, the microcode pointer, so it becomes 001. And then the next rising edge is for incrementing the program counter. 
So the program counter over here is going to be incremented in this particular rising edge. This particular rising edge really does not have a name other than just saying that we are auto incrementing the program counter. Okay, so control T. The program counter is more pointing at zero one, which means it, we are now ready for the next fetch uh, phase of the execution of the next instruction. But you know, let's not jump ahead of ourselves because we still have this instruction to, do to be done, to be performed or executed. So the instruction register is seven six. On the falling edge, we are decoding. In other words, when the micro code pointer is zero zero one and we're gonna have a falling edge, it is called the decode phase in this particular processor. What that will do is copy the instruction register to the micro group pointer, but it's not gonna override the entire thing because this is an 8-bit register, this is a 12-bit register. So what's gonna happen is the entire instruction register, which is 8-bit, is going to copy to bit 4 to 11, which is the most significant 8 bits of the micro code pointer. The least significant four bits will be zero from this particular constant over here. So here's control T. All right, so now that we have decoded, which means the instruction register, the micro code pointer, as well as the ROM or the address in the ROM that is being selected, they're all matching up with 76 or 760, depending on which one we are talking about. So now that we have decoded, the next rising edge is the execute side, execute phase of the instruction cycle. But we are not going to do that because we want to figure out what the program is going to do or what this particular configuration of the processor is going to do. So what that involves is looking at the highlighted stuff you know, in, the, um, um, in Zerno and then go through those one by one. All right, this is Zerno. So we note that the um, register bank is the first thing or one of the things highlighted in yellow or hi just highlighted. And we want to look in larger sim and see if it is selected in some way. Well, the answer is yes, it is selected. So the first thing we want to know is, okay, if it is selected, it means there's something in the register bank is going to be updated. And we want to find out which one and why it is the case. So before you get familiarized with the processor, you probably want to right click and go into the register bank. And in this case, you see that you know, the register input select is a zero one. As a, re as a result, register B is enabled. So it is about to be updated. So then you might want to go back to Zerno and document this. Um, I will zoom in one more time. Oh, okay, it doesn't like that. Control, shift plus, there we go, okay. So what I'm gonna do is to highlight it. So you probably need to do this you know, for every um, instruction. So to highlight it, um, I can switch to a different tool or I can continue to use the, the highlighted tool. But the highlighted tool is kind of thick. So let me see if I can change the uh, tool setting here. Um, nope, that doesn't change the size of the highlight. Maybe right click. Nope. Oh, right here. Okay. So thickness, con thickness control in Zerno is, you know, right here. So I'm using a thinner you know, highlighter right now because what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to say, okay, let's figure out which one is you know, highlighted is, um, is a one. So we know that input select is a one. So I'm going to highlight from here to here. And this is coming from R-I-E-N. R-I-E-N is coming from the ROM. Now it is, if this is the first few times you do this, you probably want to double check and make sure that is the case. So R-I-E-N is right here. And you can color code the whole thing too, but because there will be so many tunnels being used, the highlighting may not be super helpful. But you know, let's just say that you want to consider doing that. So we're going to use a you know, different highlighter, okay? Or we can use the same one, okay? There we go. So this is R-I-E-N, and R-I-E-N is also here, which is coming from the ROM. So the explanation of why um, uh, register B is selected or enabled, you know, that basically is the end. Now, the, if we switch back to the register bank, the RI uh, register input select being a zero one, 
is um, out of this pin here. Now, if you ever need to know which pin in the design of a circuit corresponds to which pin of the package, you can always you know, switch to the component and then switch to the packaging or the appearance view. And then once you're here, you can select you know, the pin by its position and then it will show you a very small, okay, I cannot move the mouse cursor because you know, otherwise it loses you know, the picture in picture. But if you look at the right hand, uh, lower right hand corner, there's a picture in picture. So that basically is a tool for you to correspond the positioning of a pin uh, or port on the appearance of a circuit and match that with the actual input pin or output pin of the actual circuit. So it's a, it's a pretty useful tool. All right, so switching back to here. So now we can go back to main and then we say this particular uh, tunnel, which is called register input select, R-I-S-E-L, is what is controlling this, um, which, registers be, which, which, which register is being selected. So in this circuit over here, we can highlight it, okay, you know, that's, you know, uh, something we can do. I mean, in fact, I can use blue color to highlight this one and then change back to a thinner wire to kind of point here. So as usual, our first question is, um, where is it coming from? Well, this one comes from ROM2. So if we go with ROM, we can see that, oh, okay, so this one is also coming from ROM. It is, in fact, the, the next uh, tunnel here. So that ex expl explanation ends here. However, there's one more thing we probably want to do is to note uh, what is the value of RISEL. And as we saw earlier, let me go back to the earlier part here. If you uh, just kind of poke this wire, you can see it is a zero one. So we want to go back here and hide and basically you know, document using a text tool. Now, when you use the text tool, you can actually select the color as well as the font size. So in this case, I'm going to choose a smaller font size because otherwise, you know, the character would be too big. Even this is a little bit too big because if I specify zero one here, you can see it's kind of big too. So I'm going to select a smaller font, uh, maybe a size eight, and try again. Okay, zero one. Okay, that looks a little better. Um, once you have written the text, you can actually move it around too. The tool to use to move things around is you know, select a, a rectangle, then you can just move it around. So like this, okay, oh, maybe not. Okay, just click on it and you know you can you can kind of move it around now. now. If you want to, you know you can also to use a highlighter um, to highlight you know, the text here. Okay, so we are just gonna highlight this here. There we go. All right. So now, you know, this is why, you know, how we can tell that um, register B is enabled. All of this is to figure out register B is enabled. So on, a, on yet another piece of paper, possibly on the same paper, we can just write it down here. So, um, okay, let me kind of demonstrate what I mean by that. So now we can say, you know, R-I-E-N, register input enable is a one. Um, you know, some branch is uh, dated, okay? Uh, R-I-S-E-L is zero one in base two. So now we know branch B is going to be updated. So now what do we do next? Well, that's, you know, once we know a register is going to be updated, the question to ask is how is it updated? Um, there were some questions about, you know, how do I know what question to ask, you know, as soon as I know uh, a register is being updated. I really do not have an answer to that question because, you know, it just, um, it just occurs to me, you know, my mind just aut you know, automatically ask that question. Because, you know, as soon as I know that this register B is getting updated, the, the question I have in my mind is, uh, what is supplying the value to update it? I mean, I really do not know how I came up with that question. So I can't really answer the question of you know, how I can tell whether, you know, th what the next question is going to be. You can just write it down too, okay? You can write it down as a rule. You know, when the register is enabled, the next question to ask is, you know, what is supplying the value to update it? Um, 
I guess over time you will also learn to ask these questions. All right, so getting back to the circuit, register B is updated by the D port. Now, how, why do I know the register B or any register is updated by the D port? That has to do with the documentation of a register, which is about the whole discussion of the D flip-flop. So that part is actually you know, something that we covered in the, in the class already. So the important part about this class is making the association or the connection between all the concepts, which is which means you know, you kind of need to track you know all of these concepts you know on um, e on paper somewhere in your notes if you cannot track all of these things in your head, and I mo I think most people cannot track you know this much information in their head, so that means you know note taking and being able to review your notes and look for connections between concepts is actually quite important. All right, so we are looking at the input port here, register input port, and getting back to the main circuit here, that is corresponding to this wire over here. So our next task is to look at this and go and ask the question, you know, who is specifying you know, this wire? It is the output of a multiplexer and the job of a multiplexer is to select one of the inputs to connect to the output. That is the job of a multiplexer. We talked about that when we first went over uh, what a multiplexer is and how and what it does. We didn't quite explain inside the multiplexer how it gets the job done, which is okay. We just look at the multiplexer as a single component in this case. This multiplexer has an enable, which is R-I-E-N. We already know R-I-E-N is coming from the ROM, so we don't have a question of why you know the, this multiplexer is enabled. Uh, this multiplexer has a select that is coming from RIMUX. Okay, this wire is connected to RIMUX, and RIMUX is a zero. So the next question is: Is R uh, is RIMUX coming from the ROM? And the answer is yes. RIMUX also comes from the ROM. In this case, it has a value of zero. So now we switch back to um, Zerno because you know we want to kind of document that. Because you know, Zerno cannot, you, you, it's not logistic, it doesn't actually have the value here. So any value that we want to track, you know, it has to be highlighted here. So I'm going to switch to a different highlighter. Okay, there we go. And, oh, okay. There we go. This is an orange color. And you can also you know, kind of change the opac opacity of the, um, of the highlighter. So you can reduce the, the transparency um okay i'm not sure okay i think this is this is going to work okay so now we look at this multiplexer okay and it is connected to ri mux and ri mux comes from the rom and if this is the first few times you do this you know going through this exercise and just you know highlighting things that are actually the same because every um, uh, tunnel connected to the same that has the same name are technically the same. Oh, okay. I also changed the text, you know, color. You know, let's change that back to black here. Okay. Oh, it won't let me do that. Okay. So I guess I have to select it first. Select and change the color black back to here. Okay. There we go. Hopefully the highlighter is not changed. Oh, it's not. Okay. Very good. All right, so now we have to go back to the text tool, and then we highlight this RI mux as a one, okay? Because you know that is important, because you know the one of this RI mux is what makes it select this particular wire. So I forgot to do um, a few things, you know, because you know I need to track the actual connection. So that means, you know, um, if I were to track the actual connection, that we have to pick a color to do that. Um, and there are not many colors I haven't used yet. <laughs> uh, so that is a little bit of a problem, okay, because we have used magenta, we have used light blue, we haven't used, you know, this uh, magenta color over here, so I'm going to use magenta. Because you know, at, in the entire exercise, we are trying to make sure that we know which one is which one, you know, or how things are connected. So in the uh, register bank, this, this also has a diagram here. We also know that 
as far as enabled registers are concerned, we have this wire going all the way to here. In other words, we are now tracking you know, um, how components are interconnected. So this magenta line is doing that. So because the RMUX being the select of this multiplexer is a one, so we know input one is the one that we need to trace. So we are tracing it right now. And as I said, you know, if you have an actual proper tool, this is a whole lot easier. Okay, this is coming out of the ALU. So now that we know the output of the ALU is used to update register B, the next question is, um, what is the output? Okay, how does the ALU compute the output you know, in this case. So once again, you know, why do I know that is the question to ask? I really do not know. It just makes sense to me, you know, that, you know, when the regist when a when the input of a register connects to the output of the ALU, that I need to track down what is inside the ALU and figure out what it's doing. So I can't really explain, you know, fully, you know, um, that line of reasoning because it, it's natural to me. All right, so let's go back here. And then this, the output of the uh, ALU is right here. So we know this is the line that, we, that I need to highlight. So now it is coming from a multiplexer. Now this tool, you know, Zerno, cannot tell me what is the, how the multiplexer is configured. I can only do that using Logisim. So in Logisim, I am going into the ALU and I need to track this down, right? And the question is, how is it connected to, um, uh, which input is used to connect to the output for this multiplexer? Uh, this multiplexer is actually disabled. I don't know why, because I thought we were executing the instruction. Okay, I need to check a few things now. Yep, we are indeed executing the instruction, but the ALU is not selected. Huh. Okay. And RMUX is a zero instead of a one. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, so I, I made a mistake. Sorry about that. I made a mistake because I thought RMUX uh, is a one, but that is mistaken. Okay, so I need to change that one to a zero because you know, it was a zero. And I need to go back and kind of erase, uh, pick up the eraser. This magenta line needs to be erased because it's not actually coming out of the ALU. Now, even though I made a mistake, the mistake actually so shows something that is important because I just double check things and it's like, this doesn't make sense. Because if the ALU is connected to the input or port D of register B, then the ALU should be enabled to do something, but it's not. So this is how, you know, this is also, I'm going to call this one, you know, um, critical thinking. You know, basically I'm just looking at this and go like, hmm, this does not make sense. Um, and, you know, exactly why I know what question to ask once again is, is, difficult to explain. I, I just know what question to ask. Okay, but getting back here, okay, input zero, yeah, because your reg RIMUX is a zero. So this is the Y that I need to track. And this goes you know, to multiple places, right? So this goes all the way to here. Uh, okay, I'm, not, I'm trying to see if I can draw a straight line. There's a ruler, so let's see if the ruler does what I think it does. Oh, it does, okay, that is kind of nice. Okay, so it goes here on one side, and you know, if you were to do this on the piece of paper, it is actually a whole lot easier. Now this terminal, this connection is not meaningful to me because I'm looking for someone who is um, outputting something. This is the one of the inputs of this multiplexer. It does not actually drive. It does not specify the output. So on this side, it goes here, and on the other side. I mean, this is this is one of the wires that goes 
to many, many different places. But you know, the first time you do this, you kind of have to track every single one and make sure that, oh, okay, this is a dead end because this is connecting to the D port of the instruction register, which is also just an input port. It cannot be used to specify content. So now I have to go to the other side, okay? So the other side goes to this output pin. The output pin is just for reflecting the value of a wire. So it's not, um, you cannot, we cannot use it to specify a value on the wire. So ultimately, this connects to this place, which is connected to the D port of RAM. Okay, so if the D port of RAM is connected ultimately using this magenta line to uh, the D port of register B, then the next question I need to ask is uh, which location um, so, okay, there are a few things. First of all, I, you know, I should check that the RAM is selected because it, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Otherwise, you know, why, why are we doing this? The second thing is not only RAM should be selected, but it should also be, uh, we should be reading RAM because we want the D port here to be an output. So those questions cannot be answered by, you know, Zerno by looking at the static circuit. They can only be answered by looking in the circuit diagram here. So over here, we can see that, oh, okay, RAM is indeed selected. RAM cell is a one. So you, if you want to document it, you'll, you should probably make note of that too. So I'm gonna make note of exactly that. Okay, so this is why you know, this video is a little bit long because I'm using a clunky tool to do all this stuff here. So now I just write down using a text tool, okay. Um, a RAM cell is a one. So I, we, we know we're using RAM. RAM load is also a one, you know, that means we are reading from RAM. So now we switch back to um, the circuit diagram here. So RAM load is a one, RAM cell is a one, we are reading from RAM. And you know, so I just know what question to ask, okay? Because you know, the whole purpose of RAM is to store values at in its locations. And there are many, many locations in RAM that can store a value. So the port that we use to select which location we are reading to, reading from or writing to is the A port. So I just know that we have to track down A port to, to, to figure out you know, who is determining which location I should be reading from. So that's what I need to do next is to go back into uh, Zerno and it'll figure out you know, how we uh, which location we are reading from. So if you want to highlight stuff, okay, because highlighting is a good exercise, so we can just go back and use you know, some of the colors that we have used already for highlighting. So now you can say your know, RAM cell, which is this thing here, okay. The highlighting exercise is good for at least the fir first few times because this helps to make sure that we understand you know, whether a particular value is coming from ROM, and this one is certainly coming from ROM. And so is RAM load. So RAM load is also coming from ROM. And then we just you know, go here and highlight this, okay. In other words, I'm just highlighting things that are of importance you know, in the execution of this instruction. Okay, there we go. All right, okay. So now the next thing is for me to track down the, the A port and where it is connected to. Um, to do this, you know, it would be nice if I have you know, another color um, because you know, the magenta color is used already to establish the connection between the D port of RAM and the D port of register B. But I don't have a whole lot of colors to play with. Um, I think I might be able to make more colors. Um, let me see. Nope, I cannot right click here. This allows me to change only, oh, I can actually pick a color along with uh, changing the opacity. All right, but I think if I do this, I'm changing this particular uh, palette. Uh, um, but I'm changing you know, uh, universally you know, what this one looks like, which may not be what I want to do. Um, 
Okay, I need to make a decision here. Let's just pick uh, this orange color, you know, as the highlight to track down where A port is connected to. And I'm going to use the uh, the ruler tool, you know, just because you know, it allows me to make better looking straight lines like so. Okay, so it goes here. Once again, it goes to an output port, which is not useful for what we need to know, because you know, the A port is always acting as an input to RAM, because you know, the RAM needs to know, okay, which location am I supposed to be addressing? And you know, somebody else has to tell the RAM component which location it should be addressing. So we can see this is coming out of a multiplexer, and when the tracking is you know, down to the output of a multiplexer, the next question to ask is which input connects to this output. So once again, that is just logic to me. I cannot really an you know, answer the question of how I know. The next question to ask is you know, how the multiplexer is being selected or what it is selecting as its input to connect to the output. So now we switch back to here. <coughs> and you know, in here we see this is a dark color, which is a zero. So I now know, okay, I now know that uh, input zero is connected to that output. So I just, you know, draw some connections here and up here and up here, okay. And then I go back and, you know, do some highlighting here as well. Okay, so this time I'm going to use the blue color here to basically say, oh, I need to switch back to a non-ruler tool, turn it off, okay. So address mux is a zero, and that is causing that particular multiplexer to um, use input zero. And ADDR mux is over here. It is also one of the tunnels, so that means you know, I don't have to explain why ADDR mux is a zero. So if you want to be consistent, you, know, you can also just you know, type a zero here, just so that it is visible, you know, it has a value of zero. I didn't do that with uh, RAM, okay? I could have done that with RAM too. We have RAM cell is a one in this case. RAM mode is also a one in this case. So this way, you know, it's, you know, I just you know, put those values here. So now we need to look at this demultiplexer. I am utilizing, you know, output zero of this demultiplexer. A demultiplexer selects the only one input and connect to one, connect that to one of the two outputs. So that means you know, this select you know, is important. It is called RO0DMX, which is out register output one D multiplexer. So let's go ahead and highlight it because we want to figure out you know, where does it go. Okay. Uh, once again, I changed the color before I changed the tool, so that might have changed the color of some of the text. Um, let's see, did it do that? Yep, it did. Okay. Because you know these texts were just used, you know, uh, was just um, put into place, and as a result, you know, the color change also changed that too, but which is okay. It's not a big problem. So now we switch back to LogiSim and find out what is register output one D mux. So that is dark green, which means we are selecting output zero. So everything is working out, because you know if we were to come back here and use the orange color highlighter. We now know that this input to the demultiplexer connects to the output that is connected to, um, ultimately, to the A port of RAM. So now we need to know, you know, um, what is out one connected to inside the register bank. Um, and before we do that, I am going to document this a little bit here. Um, we have to switch back to this color and uh, register output register output one D mux as a value of zero. So we, I'm just putting you know, the documentation here, so I don't lose track of that later. Um, okay, so now we need to look into you know out one of the register bank. So I switch back to LogiSim and right click on the register bank and go in. This is out one register output one. So we now need to track down this wire and ask you where is it connected to. This is a multiplexer. The select, which is under the gray dot, is a one zero. So that means you know, this one zero is of importance because ultimately this one zero is telling me that input two connects to the output, which means it is connected to 
uh, register C's Q port, which is the output of register C. All right, now switch back to here. Um, I now need to go, uh, oh, a few things to do, you know, even here. Switch back to the highlighting tool and you know, go back to the green color. Uh, register output one select is specifying zero one. Okay, so I'm, I'm just documenting that right here. Okay, this is zero one. And you know, things are getting pretty tight here you know, because you know, there's not a whole lot of space. So I can just kind of move things around a little bit so that you know they are not, it's a little bit easier to read like that. Red, uh, register output one select is also coming from ROM. Now, if you are to do this, you know, um, you can you know, actually make your own table. So it's easier for you to tell which one is coming from ROM and which one is not coming from ROM. But we can see that register output one select does come from ROM, which is right here. Okay. And you can make your table you know, alphabetically ordered. So that makes it easier to kind of locate items. Uh, register output one uh, multiplexer is also coming from ROM. We, we should highlight that one too. So this one is also coming from ROM, like so. Um, all right, next thing is to track things inside the register bank. So the, we are inside the register bank, and this time we are using the orange line to highlight this wire, which is in use. And because of how register output one select is specifying one zero in this case, so that means uh, this multiplexer is selecting input two because one zero in base two is two in decimal. So we are now tracking down this wire and I'm gonna go back to use a ruler tool. So it's, it's easier to draw you know, straight lines like so. Now it does connect to both of the demultiplexers, but that is not really of importance to me because, okay, let me go back here, because this is an input to this multiplexer. So that means you know, it is not providing a value, okay? This is just passively listening to things. The only thing that is actively providing a value is the Q port of register C. The Q port of any D flip-flop is the output, as we probably have seen, in, not probably, we have seen that in when we talked about D flip-flops and also when we talked about you know, registers because the register can be seen as a multi-bit D flip-flop. All right, so now we have made all the necessary con con uh, connections. So the output of register C ultimately goes to, um, okay, this is, this is why this diagram is useful because if you track down the orange wire, this ultimately goes to the A port of RAM. On the other hand, the magenta line, which is connecting from uh, the D port of RAM all the way to uh, the input into the register bank, which then connects to the input or port D of register B. So that completes the analysis. Now, not exactly because I know the instruction, but if you're not sure about this instruction, you should look for other things that are also enabled. So we're gonna go through the, you know, the PC. It is not enabled, it's not updating. We look at the um, flex register. It is also disabled, it's not updating. We look at the instruction register. It is also, this. it's not enabled, it's not updating. So that's how we know, you know none of the other things really matter because you know, they're not, they not being updated, okay? So we don't have to analyze any one of those. So getting back to um, Zernal, you know, basically it's the documentation. So now we know that, um, you know, if I were to document this, okay, so let's document. So at this point, we know that um, in, in RTL, okay, in register transfer language, what we now know is register B is getting updated. So it is on the left-hand side of the assignment operator. Remember, I am borrowing this syntax from C. And then we are also accessing RAM, or at least you know, a content of RAM. So that means you know, we are dereferencing something because in order to access something in RAM, somebody has to specify which location. So that becomes you know, the thing inside the parentheses is who is telling me where I'm reading from RAM. And in this case, it is register C because the output of register C connects to 
uh, the A port of RAM. Okay, so I'm gonna add in some more documentation here. Okay, so this is because, um, okay, because uh, RAM.A is connected to register C dot Q. Okay, the output of register C connects to the A part of RAM, and B is on the other side because um, B is um, register B dot EN is a one, and then finally, let me scroll down a little bit so you can see what I'm typing. Okay, so finally, B equals to oops, B equals to star C or asterisk C or D reference C because uh, register B, the D port of register B D connects to the D port of RAM. So that is um, the full explanation of what we are dealing with here. So since we are register, so because um, this is the um, RTL of the operation, now we can actually look up the optical table and find out which mnemonic corresponds to this. So when we go to the optical table, let me put the optical table in your view. I just did the opposite. I hid the optical table. So give me a second to switch back to that. Okay, so let me put it into your view. So we now know that we are um, updating register B with the location that register C is pointing to. So when you look up your column C, we know the RTL description already. We just need to find the one that matches it. And let's see. The font size on my screen is really small, so okay. So that take, that's going to take me a little bit of time to find which one we are looking at. Um, it's right here. Okay. So X is a placeholder for a register. Y is a placeholder for a register. So one register is updated by um, the location in RAM that is pointed to by a register. It doesn't have to be another register. It can be the same register. But it is this instruction here. And then the mnemonic is LD. And then the register being updated. In parentheses, the register being acting as a pointer. So in this case, I can now say that this is the mnemonic corresponding to this operation is LDB in parentheses C. So that's, uh, that's the analysis of one single instruction. And you should do the same kind of analysis. You know, on a, I mean, you're going to need a lot of these PDFs you know, because you know, this one, I'm going to save it because it is only for the LD instruction. So I'm going to if I were to save this you know, in my drive, on my drive, I'm going to save this one as simply LD, okay? So I'm going to have another one for LDI, another one for store, another one for subtract, another one for compare, another one for JMPI, another one for JCI. Now, once you have done with JCI, you really don't need another one for um, JSI, JOI, JZI, and then JLI because they are very similar in that case. Um, but basically, of the entire family of opcode, it's you should pick at least one and you know, basically do this whole you know, exercise so that you can explain inside the processor how things are interconnected. Um, and this instruction, the LD instruction, is actually relatively simple to track. The more difficult ones to track and even to document are the conditional branch instructions because those, they're tricky to document because you know, there are two ways to update the program counter. So you need some kind of method to differentiate and go like, okay, both of these are possible and this particular bit is the determining factor choosing which of the two inputs. All right, so that's the end of this um, additional supplemental video. And, you know, and this basically what I have just shown you here is essential and that is probably a good use of the two extra hour that you need to spend to study the material for every hour that is in lecture. Um, because you know, 
by doing this, you're getting more familiarized with the processor. And you know, that's going to be super helpful for the next uh, exam. All right. So I hope you guys find this useful. And you know, at least you know, I hope you kind of get a general idea of how to study and what to practice when you are, you know, when we're at this point of this class. All right. I will see you guys in class on Monday or Tuesday.